Compared to just 10 years ago, TV's release these days have undergone numerous evolution and have made remarkable progress in terms of quality, and their sizes are also expanding their market share from 55-inch to 85-inch. Although it is our daily routine to see vivid and colorful screens that are close to reality, if we look inside TVs, we can see that they are made up of quite a variety of parts. Except for electronic components, you can see two sheets of glass and various films and the backlight located at the back. The difference between the mini LED TV and the existing LCD TV is that it uses a 200 micron size mini LED as a backlight instead of a few centimeter size LED backlight. If the backlight unit is manufactured using LEDs of different sizes in this way, the difference as seen on the screen will be displayed. The picture quality will be explained later. In conclusion, the mini LED TV is very thin compared to the existing LCD TV. Here is a comparison of Samsung TVs having 85 inch of screen size. All the TVs in the table as examples are not TVs from the past, they are all TVs currently on the market. As shown in the table, the thickness of QLED TV, which is currently priced higher than general LCD, is about 55 mm or 5.5 cm. As the backlight is changed to a mini LED, the thickness has been greatly reduced, and the latest Infinity model is about 1.5 cm thick, less than one third of the thickness of QLED. How could the thickness be reduced so dramatically? Unlike OLED, pixels of LCD panel do not emit light on their own, but use the backlight. However, since the LED itself that composes the backlight is much larger than the size of the pixel, it is necessary to make the light emitted from the LED uniform. If we make a TV without making uniform backlight unit, the backlight LEDs will be noticeable. The screen will be very messy, right? To solve this problem, a diffuser film is used, which scatters light from the LEDs to random directions and hides the position of the LED behind it. However, if the density of the LED constituting the backlight is low, the scattering film must be placed relatively far away from the bank light. This is the reason why the thickness of the conventional QLED is thick. Due to the large size of the LED and the low density, it is necessary to secure large distance between the bank light and the scattering film, and consequently, the thickness of the TV must be thick. Since the mini LED TV uses 30,000 tiny LEDs densely, even if the scattering film is close to the bank light, uniformly distributed light can be obtained. This can be seen as the greatest strength in terms of design of mini LED TVs apart from the picture quality itself, and it is possible to overcome the disadvantage of being thick compared to OLED TVs. Now let's take a close look at the mini LED bank light. Assuming the robot is about 180 cm tall on the screen, the bank light of the 85 inch TV looks like this. The bank light consists of 30,000 mini LEDs on the left and the bank light consists of 200 regular LED on the right. In the actual animation, I placed 30,000 LEDs so you can see how dense it is. At some distance, the backlight LEDs are small enough to be hard to see. About 30,000 mini LEDs constituting the backlight are grouped into a bundle of about 15 and divided into 2,000 zones, and the brightness of these 2,000 zones are adjusted according to the actual brightness of the image to be expressed. When watching a live video, let's animate what the backlight looks like. 
with the different brightness levels by dividing it into 2,000 zones. As you can see in the video, the backlight composed of 30,000 mini LEDs have the ability to adjust the brightness by itself according to the brightness of each part of the screen. The dark part of the screen also dims the backlight, and the bright part also brightens the backlight. By dividing the 30,000 mini LEDs about 2,000 zones, it responds to the screen like this. In the past, there was a time when bang light was always on. Should we take a look at one more? What would it look like if we didn't divide it into 2,000 zones? Instead, if each of the 30,000 mini LEDs are individually driven, while absorbing almost the advantages of OLED TV, it is free from the burning problems, which is the disadvantage of OLED. And there are no obstacles to enlargement, so it is highly likely to become a very intimidating technology. No, it's already intimidating enough. This video is an expression of what difference the mini-LED TV makes compared to the existing LCD TV. As you can see on the left side of the screen, dark part of the image was obtained by turning off the backlight itself or turning it on very weakly. And the right side of the screen shows the same image of the LCD TV without such fine backlight adjustment ability. Thanks to the use of mini LEDs and the ability to adjust the backlight by dividing it into 2,000 zones, it is possible to display bright areas brighter without obscuring the entire screen. As shown on the right side of the screen, it is possible to implement a clear image while expressing bright area more brightly. This technology makes it suitable for expressing dynamic images close to actual brightness. Efforts to increase the maximum brightness in LCD TVs then use mini LEDs can be said to be a strategy to widen the gap with OLED TVs which have limited screen brightness due to burning issues. Wouldn't the answer come? If we thought carefully about why LG Electronics recently announced that it would sell QNED using mini-LED technology, rather than focusing on OLED, which is doing well. That's it for today. Goodbye.